Hello everyone, this is Ivan and this is time to talk about aviation technologies. And uh, today I would like to discuss with you uh, the basic of data fusion. Uh, we will try to discuss it so briefly at the uh, low level of understanding with a zero background. As you know, on board of aircraft we have a lot of different sensors and many parameters can be measured by different sensors. As an example, uh, in navigation we are talking about airplane plates or coordinates of airplane location. And in this case we have uh, plenty different sensors by which we can measure airplane location in some Cartesian reference frame. We can use a satellite navigation system, GNSS, or multi-constellation GNSS with the WAF AGNOS support, or we can use inertial navigation system, or we can uh, navigate by navigational aid, which is uh, located on the ground. Thus, three different approaches can be used to detect airplane coordinates on board of aircraft. And all of these systems, okay, and box uh, on board of aircraft of each system provide us coordinates of airplane with particular latitude, longitude, and altitude. However, we have a problem because uh, all of these sensors has their own errors. And if we would like to understand which coordinate uh, we can use uh, further in different systems of data processing, uh, we need to decide how we can fuse all of these coordinates of airplane to get exactly one precise airplane location. Uh, I can show you quite simple example. Uh, nowadays, inside of each mobile phone, we have a GNSS receiver, usually supported uh, by multi-constellation approach. And if we take two mobile phones, we've got two GNSS receivers inside. If we switch on application for localization of these mobile phones, we can measure coordinates of each mobile phone uh, in some reference frame. It may be ECF, it may be uh, NAT, it may be LLR, latitude, longitude and altitude, which is much more popular. And uh, altitude we've got in PGS-84 reference frame. Okay, next. Thus, we've got two sensors that can measure uh, own location in space. And we've got a coordinate. And quite important that each of these sensors has errors. And finally, uh, due to random behavior of this error's influence, coordinates measured, measured by each mobile phone will be different. Uh, all of them will be near the same, but exactly numbers of uh, our location will be different. Why? Because uh, each sensor has errors. If Okay, if we talk about errors, in most cases uh, we are talking about standard deviation. However, in most cases we use dispersion, which is a uh, power by two of uh, standard deviation. And in case if uh, we've got the same probability density distribution of this error, which means uh, normal uh, probability density distribution and uh, which means that 
standard deviations of both sensors are, are the same. In this case, we can just uh, sum coordinates and divide by number of data. It means by two. Thus, if you've got a standard deviation of one mobile phone is equal to standard deviation of another mobile phone, uh, we can uh, easily add measured values and then divide it by number of sensors and we've got the mean value. And in this case, everything is okay and it is correct. However, in reality, <laughs> It is very ideal situation, and uh, usually each sensor has his own standard deviation. And in this case, each mobile phone, each sensor inside of this mobile phone will have uh, its own uh, probability density distribution function of error. It means uh, has particular standard deviation. And in this case, we cannot just add result of measurements because different standard deviation. And in this case, we need to apply some math to use uh, data together uh, with, uh, some, uh, with some level of optimality or uh, which can minimize something or which can ma maximize something to make efficient decision of uh, our location. And uh, actually in this video uh, we will talk about probability based approach uh, with uh, uh, talking about maximum likelihood method. Uh, Okay, uh, let me share my screen and uh, we will continue talking. Thus, uh, first of all, let's uh, decide what we have in our input. We've got one parameter. It may be coordinate of airplane. It may be any other parameter. It just doesn't matter uh, up to now. Thus, we've got uh, measured parameter and we've got a standard deviation uh, of this measured parameter. Standard deviation is a description of a probability density function. And of course, we consider a normal probability density distribution function. Why? Because standard deviation is normal probability it is a parameter of uh, Gaussian process. If we take assumption that uh, probability density function of error has some different form, as an example, kernel density function, which also quite often used in modern uh, data processing. And in this case, uh, and the deviation it is not optimal description because there are a set of parameters which is used to describe a particular probability density function. That's why in uh, our example today we will talk about uh, probability uh, about Gaussian or normal probability density function only. Uh, that's why uh, measured value or mean value it is x. It is our parameter and a standard deviation or dispersion. It is a um, uh, shape parameter of uh, normal probability density function. And uh, one of the common case when we um, have to apply uh, this task. It is uh, surveillance data processing. As you know, uh, there are different sensors for uh, airplane coordinate detection in the ground. And one of the basic one, uh, it is uh, radars. 
and in civil aviation it is secondary surveillance radar. That's why we have a network of secondary surveillance radars and each of these radar provide us uh, okay, <laughs> distance and azimuthal angle of each uh, airplane. However, next, after trans transmission of this data to the surveillance data processing unit, it, it will be uh, transformed to latitude and longitude or to uh, x, y, and z, if it is possible. Also quite important that in the secondary surveillance radar processing, we know identification of aircraft. That's why it is also quite important, uh, especially for civil aviation. And uh, at, the, at the surveillance data processing system, or hub, we have multiple input from all the secondary surveillance radar at particular region. And uh, here I've got a map, like this one. This is an example how many radars we have. Also, there are different uh, like types of radars uh, based on uh, uh, based on covered uh, volume of airspace. There are terminal radar. There are uh, en route secondary surveillance radar and uh, maximum range of uh, radar operation is different and depends on technical characteristic of this radar. That's why in my picture you will see that there are a lot of different uh, circles and this circle it is maximum range of radar operation. And if you can consider a particular airspace you will see that how many radars, radars has crossing areas. And it means that one airplane can be detected by each of the radars that uh, is covered this uh, place where aircraft uh, is located. And uh, also quite important that Errors of radar depends on the range to the object. It means that if aircraft is located close to radar, we can estimate location of this aircraft uh, very precisely. A approximately like 5 meters. However, if the same aircraft will be located in uh, 200 kilometers from this ground station of radar, performance of uh, this coordinate detection will be absolutely different. And uh, it can be like 200 meters. That's why uh, if we measure airplane location by different radars, uh, always we've got different sigma of airplane location from different radars. That's why uh, for one radar this aircraft can be close, for another radar this aircraft can be located at the boundary line of this radar operation. And uh, in this case this is a typical fusion problem. Uh, that's why, if we can talk uh, about examples or about numbers, uh, in well-equipped uh, airspace, it can be up to 20 different radars, areas crossing uh, for each part of airspace. It means that it doesn't matter where is aircraft, it can be sensed by 20 different radars. And all of this data we need to fuse to understand where exactly aircraft is. Uh, that's
that's why let's go to formals a little bit. Oh, sorry. Not this one. Uh, this is fun. Uh, okay. Before we will talk about maximum likelihood method, let's talk about posterior probability. Because uh, all of them comes from probability-based approach. Uh, there is a bias formula in theory of probability, which talk for us that uh, posterior probability, this one, is equal to uh, prior prob probability multiplied with the likelihood function. I don't want to talk you uh, too much about bias theory. Uh, if you would like, you can find it in Wikipedia. You've got we've got quite uh, well description of this formula and uh, how it works and why we've got uh, this one. Uh, okay. In our case. Uh, we will uh, talk about maximum likelihood method or maximum likelihood approach, which is ground on uh, finding a solution of fusion uh, which support maximum posterior probability. And in this case, we can uh, assume that prior probability is equal to 1. It means that uh, our likelihood function uh, is uh, equally distributed by uh, probability. That's why we can assume that prior probability equal to 1. And uh, finally, we got that posterior probability is equal to uh, likelihood function, and uh, if you talk about if you talk about uh, Gaussian uh, normal distributed uh, errors, uh, we we can uh, put normal density distribution function in our likelihood function. It means that uh, we have Z here. It is uh, multiple measurements of the same parameter. And sigma it is the standard deviation with which we measure it. And X it is our uh, mean value. Okay. And in our task, uh, we need to find uh, a condition in which x will take maximum value. How we can do it? Quite easily. What we need to do? We need to find first derivatives from our likelihood function and make equal to zero. And we will have an equation and we need, we need to solve this equation to get x. And in this case, this x, uh, it will be our, uh, our like fused value, which we need to find. OK, thus, uh, if we, uh, OK, this sign p, it means multiplication, because uh, probabilities and probability density functions usually we multiply when it uh, happened in, in one time. And in our case, we've got one airplane which is located one airplane which is located in one particular place, and this location is measured by different sensors. That's why all of them it happened in one time. That's why we need to multiply uh, all of these uh, probability density functions. 
Uh, okay, thus what we need to do, we just need to find first derivatives uh, from uh, our likelihood function. And uh, it will be easy because this is multiplication and there is no x. That's why this part will be uh, cleared. And uh, only that we need to let it is uh, uh, order. Order of our exponential function. And um, when we find those derivatives, it, we, we've got only order of exponential function. And of course, uh, this multiplication sign for uh, order uh, will be changed to summarization. Sign. Thus, we've got sum of uh, x minus z divided by uh, this station. Then we make uh, it equal to zero to find extremal value for x. And uh, finally we can easily get our x value. That's why x value is equal to sum of uh, weighted z divided by sum of opposite weighted coefficients or dispersions. And uh, dispersion of our uh, like optimal location is the following. That's why there's only uh, opposite value uh, to our dispersion. Uh, that's why uh, quite easy we can get uh, optimal solution for fusion data with the different uh, standard deviations, which means measured by different sensors. Okay, if we talk about geometrical representation, here will be everything much more spectacular. For example, we've got, okay, maybe three different radars. Radar 1, Radar 2 and Radar 3. Uh, from first radar, okay, and we've got one airplane location. And this location is measured by three different radars. However, aircraft is only one. There is no case when we've got a uh, misunderstanding of another airplane. That's why um, from first air radar, which is located much uh, far from uh, airplane, we've got coordinates like 0 and 20 meters. Uh, and our sigma, um, probably 2 sigma, give us the following ellipse of probable airplane location. Uh, as you remember, usually in navigation, we represent uh, probable area of airplane location with the help of ellipsoids or ellipses. Ellipsoids, if you talk about three-dimensional space, ellipses, if you talk about two-dimensional space. Because errors by different axes are also different. That's why uh, sigma for x will be 1 and sigma for y will be another one, will be different. That's why finally we've got ellipse. And also uh, we draw ellipse as a 2 sigma or 3 sigma value. It depends on how many, uh, how big confidence band you would like to have. If you would like to, to get 95%, uh, you need to use 2 sigma. If you would like to get 99%, you can use 3 sigma. It doesn't matter, it depends only 
uh, assumption that we can uh, use for plotting such kind of graphs. That's why one radar give us following results. Okay, this is airplane location and this is sigma 1 and sigma x. Next radar give us airplane location in this place. And also sigma x and sigma y is different and in this case ellipsoid ellipse uh, became much more wider along the x-axis. And the third radar, which uh, are located uh, closer, which is located closer to the aircraft, give us a line, um, ellipse line with uh, dots, which is located here. And uh, we can see that uh, it makes sense that our real location or airplane real location uh, is located in the area of crossing of all of these uh, ellipses. That's why more probable that we are located in the area of crossing of all of these ellipses, ellipses than anywhere. That's why uh, if we apply our formulas for getting uh, uh, like use uh, results for coordinates x and y and for sigma x and y, we've got the following results that uh, our location, it is marked by star, will be in area where all the ellipses are crossing the most. And uh, in this case, ellipse of errors in output of our fusion will uh, like highlight a crossing area of all of these ellipses. That's why uh, fusion by maximum likelihood method give us an area of uncertainty of our location in crossing area of all of the ellipses that we use for data fusion. That's why it is great. Quite simple formula for getting x and y and for getting sigma x and sigma y. Uh, if we then uh, plot it uh, in uh, probability density functions, you will see that uh, here we've got uh, three radars measurements and our fused value for result of fusion as a magenta color. That's why our magenta will be like a mean value. Okay, will be maybe not mean value. However, it will be something between all of these uh, uh, probability density functions. However, in ellipsoid adult level, it is much more spectacular that our location is located, is placed in the point of middle of crossing area. And our ellipse, ellipse will indicate the most crossing area. That's why it is great. That's why quite simple formulas give us a great result for uh, data fusion and many systems use it. As an example, in automatic data processing system, uh, in the module of surveillance data processing, um, we've got uh, these formulas for uh, mixing uh, coordinates from different sensors. Also, I can add 
maybe at, at the end that um, in reality uh, on the ground we have not only secondary surveillance weather. We've got network of uh, wide area multi alteration. We've got network of uh, multi alteration equipment. Uh, and we've got, of course, primary surveillance weather. That's why, in reality, we have uh, uh, a lot of different sensors, and each of these sensors provides us data with particular dispersion or standard deviation. And finally, we need to use data from uh, multiple sensors. It's not only like two or three much more higher level of uh, mixing data. We've got 10, 20, 30 different sensors which can measure airplane location, then we fuse it together and finally we get much more precise data than we have from another source. Uh, if you talk about uh, onboard equipment, uh, here we've got a little bit different situation. Because according to performance-based medication, um, we have to decide which sensor is support particular RNC specification or RNA. That's why uh, if you talk about onboard equipment, uh, flight management system on board can uh, decide which sensor or which data satisfy RNP RNAV performance and only in this case uh, then it can improve for navigation. However, it's different from different flight management systems. That's why thank you very much for watching me. Uh, next time uh, I will try to show you an example of uh, radar data fusion. Uh, see you next.